Hi guys and welcome back to Crafty Quilt and Design. So I hope you're well and having a really, really fantastic day. It's a beautiful day here and I thought I'd come outside and say hello to you rather than sitting inside the caravan as I usually do. It's really lovely, the birds are singing and really I can't complain, can I? It's such a beautiful day today. It's not too cold, the wind is, is just right, just to keep you nice and cool. Um, so we left where we were in Queensland and so we arrived at this new site and it was a really nice day and so far it's going pretty well. I'll just pan around so you can see behind me where I am. Absolutely gorgeous place, so peaceful. Absolutely peaceful, really really love it here. So at some point I'll give you a little tour of where I actually live or where I've been living <laughs> for quite some time now since in March when we left the UK. So I'll give you a tour. I think I'll do the video in a couple of days time so hopefully by then either this one you'll see first or that one you'll see first. I'm not sure which one will go up first but yeah. So today we are going to be making a um, table runner so I'm going to be using some scraps. Anyway so let's get started on that and um, let's go make this table run on these mats let's get started <laughs> all right guys so i have cut some two and a half inch strips and the length really doesn't matter okay it's really down to you and how long um the strips are as you can see this is a fabric blender i was referring to and literally i haven't got much of the fabrics left over and um, so as i said two and a half but i'm not even sure what length these are I didn't really bother measure them i just cut them all the same length all right now even the batting as well that i'm using is literally is scrap so scraps from quilt that i've actually made it's a shorter piece so i'm going to join another piece i have already laid out as you can see exactly how i want it to be so i am going to stack it like so just to make sure that i pick it up in the manner of which i want to stitch it on all right so that is the order i'm going with and just pick it all up and then I'm going to start sewing. Now, I am not going to bother put the backing on at the moment because it's a, it's a quilt as you go, I'm doing, and um, I do feel I can just simply add the back on, all right? Add the backing on, but I'm going to start here and I'm going to finish. So I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam as normal. So my first one is going to be the one that I planned so it's going to go down like that. All right, and now when I do the other strip, because remember this is just a piece, it is going to be laid out exactly the same way. And I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to join it together. So I'm gonna do it separately, then use a zigzag stitch, and then put the backing fabric on in one piece. All right, so you're gonna get started on that. I'm using a quarter inch foot, and I'm just going to do a stitch length three. Um, for the quilting, I'm just going to do straight line quilting and I'm going to use my walking foot for this one and I'm going to use my walking foot guide to ensure that my um, quilting lines are evenly apart. All right, but I'll show you a little bit more detail when I get to that. So let's get started on the sewing. Now, very importantly, when you start and you put your first strip down, make sure that you have room there and you've got room at the side. Okay, now this works exactly as you would do a quilt. So if I were to make my quilt top and I put it on top, I still need to give myself an allowance there, an allowance there, an allowance on top, all right? So the same applies. So I'm just going to do a quarter inch. I'm gonna fold it in so that it's nice and neat. In fact, what I'm going to do, I have this on the smooth side, so I want to lay it down on the bumpy side. So once it's there, it stays. I always remember when it comes to batting, there's a rough side and there's a smooth side. The rough side, it stays on there. So you see it's not falling off, all right? This is perfect also for using as a display or design wall if you want to. So if you've got a piece of batting, you can use it as part of your um, design wall just so that you can try out how your blocks is going to look. So I've rolled it up. I'm simply just gonna put it down at a quarter inch and simply just so and that's it it's as easy as that and I'm then going to simply just um, do my 
backing as I would normally. I'm just going to make sure that this machine is all set up. There we go. Get started. So what I did was just simply laid it out as you saw just to make sure that I know how I wanted it to be placed. So very quick and easy. line it all up and I'm just going to take it all off and cut that I need to get a leader there I know you guys have told me already I must do that and I keep forgetting I only remember when I start to sew so I'm just going to smoothen it off with my hand because I don't want any air pockets all right I'm just going to smoothen it off before I add the next one and again this is my fabric blender and I'm going to line it up edge to edge and continue with getting it all on there so I reckon I can get this done in literally a day shouldn't really have any problems really now if you wanted to just use one whole strip of batting you can remember I am just simply using scraps of batting also. I always tend to when I do a um, a scrappy pro project I always try to keep everything scrappy so even if that includes a piece backing that is what it will include also all right so that's the third one done let's have a look again take it all out so you can see and this is very much beginner friendly and always remember that if you wanted to do a quilt like this you can because every row when you make a table runner is potentially a quilt can do it for a quilt also the same technique and just join it all together as we've been doing for the rows so again line it all up notice I smoothen it out because I don't want any air pockets on there and bring my machine closer and just simply start to sew again and I can see my machine go and just continue now if you wanted to you can use a walking foot for this you don't have to but I like to use the quarter inch because it keeps me on track and I really don't want to have to um, do the seam any larger. All right, so let's push that back and I'll show you. And then I will finish the first half of camera. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's beginning to look pretty good. So that's that there. So that fabric blender is working very beautiful, isn't it? It really complements the tone of the balance of the fabrics. So again, I'm going to do another one there, and that's exactly how I'm laying it out. So sometimes what my brain says to me is I'd lay it out like this, and then when I come here, I change it, and I say, I say to myself, oh, no, if that's how you look today before, leave it like that. So I tend not to do that because those are the things that can make you um, stay much longer to actually complete a quilt. So I'm going to complete this, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like.
all right so now that i have my two strips together and i think it's 11 and one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so it's 11 on this one and it's 11 on this one also so that's 22 strips in total all right so what i'm going to do now is to trim it right up to the edge of the fabric so i want a nice clean straight cut i want both of the two of them to be the exact same size once i've done that then i'm going to join it at the zigzag so i'm going to join it at the end so i'm considering here at the top is my at the, for the blue is my top so again both of them have been laid out in the same manner so i'm going to lay it out in this way so i'm going to put the fabric blender here at the end for where i'm going to join it like so so that is what it's going to look like so any sort of decorative feature sits in the middle there on top of the fabric blender all right so cut it trim it all off i am going to leave just a probably about um, just enough of a quarter inch to join it together one size so all right so let's do that now so again put it on your mat and line it all up what have i done with my ruler and ruler to the edge keep it nice and straight and just cut it what I'm going to do though is just literally use the edge of the ruler just make sure everything is nice and straight and line it up and give a nice clean cut I am not going to add any borders or anything like that. It's simply just going to be these fabrics. Nothing else is going to be added. No borders for this one. Um, I don't need it to get wider. It is just simply a table runner. So I just want these fabrics alone to stand out. And I'm going to trim at the top where I consider the top because it's blue. Trim it off right to the edge even if you've got a little skim <coughs> at the top there that's fine what i mean by that if there's a little bit of fab, um, back tin is showing it's not a problem because we are going to use that in the quarter inch seam anyway so don't don't stress over that the most important thing is that it's lovely and straight again line it all up now for example like this one here where you find that some of the edges of the fabric is higher than some i'm going to use the majority here as my guide for cutting so i'm going to use this area here where i'm pointing out with my finger to actually trim it up obviously yeah you cannot cut it where the longer bit is if the length is not on this side so the shorter governs where the trim is going to be lay it all up if you want to use the grid lines on your ruler sorry on the mat you can but i think i can work out a straight line without any issues one way to do it is um <laughs> there's a cat okay. here <laughs> that's all right <laughs> <laughs> there's a cat trying to get into the caravan guys and the neighbor is just literally chasing around so he decided to pop in here so what i was saying that you can just simply use the top of your line of your ruler where it stops for the fabric so for example I'm just pull it down so i can use the ruler here at the top line it up straight and ensure the same thing at the bottom there and then trim so that's what i'm literally doing you may not be able to see that but that's what i am doing did you know guys and i learned this when i came to australia that cats are not allowed to be outside um just hanging around going hunting doing whatever they do during the day they're not allowed to be like that they're not allowed to be outside unless they're on a lead like a dog um so that's how if you have to have a cat in australia that is the rules so i thought oh my god poor cats because i had a cat um in england and uh, not with me and carl but with my other family my other family that sounds a bit weird with my children and um that cat used to go everywhere literally you would get up in the morning and um, have its breakfast and you wouldn't see till the end of the day god knows where it went 
but that is what that cat did so so when I first came here and I was like I learned that you're not allowed to have a cat unless it's going to be an indoor cat or you're going to have somewhere where it's um, sort of fenced round that a cat cannot escape that's the only way you can keep a cat in Australia and I thought that whoa that's a bit mean uh, because cat by nature are hunters aren't they they like to roam so yeah so he was chasing the cat and had a lead on it as well so I think he got away from him so there you go you've learned something about Australia and their cats just like I have so what I'm doing right now is just trimming up making sure those edges are lovely and straight and I'm going to turn and check the other side as well just to make sure and I'm using the grid lines now because that I've trimmed off the batting I'm using the lines on the cutting mat just to ensure that it's nice and straight and I can see here it's a slight bend so I'm going to just trim that edge off this is such a quick simplistic project right, done so I'm going to do the same for the next one look at that doesn't that look pretty and all I'm going to do join it together join it together at this end and do a simple binding around obviously I'm going to add my um, backing all right so let's get that started and I'll show you exactly what needs to be done okay guys so I have now laid out my backing fabric to put on and I'm just going to trim the edges up but before I do that let me show you what the top looks like so far so at the back there as you can see I've did a seam line and this is the centerpiece of it so both ends are on all right so what I'm going to do now is get the backing on and I'm going to trim the fabric up here this is what I've decided to use again this is what I had in my stash and I'm just literally sewing from my stash here I haven't bought anything new um, I tend to once I go into the fabric store buy quite a few bits of fabric so that you know when I need it it's there and to be honest most of the times when I go to the fabric store I don't need it I'll be honest I just go because oh I see something on offer then yeah I'll go pick it up but you know you can't help but buy fabric so which is not very good sometimes but today I am sewing from my stash which is good um so I'm folding so that I have no folds where I cannot see yes it's a fold so what I mean by that I hope there's no fold in there tuck under so that once I cut it then I get a bow like an elbow in the cut of the piece of fabric that I want to cut so I'm just making sure that that's nice and smooth there and you can feel it if there's any lumps or bumps you will actually feel it there all right so I'm just trimming up the edges here and um, so that it's nice and clean it's no point um, using it if it is um, full of crinkles and when I say crinkles I'm referring I, I say crinkles because it's, it's sort of a word I used to use with my students and they sort of got it really but let me use the right terminology so there's no fray ends if the ends are fray then you're starting from a bad cut so if there's no fray ends and sometimes when you buy the fabric they don't cut it straight they just cut so you always it's best to start with a nice clean cut so that your cuts then are straight right so that's that now what I am going to do is just simply put this my top now literally on there so I'm just going to fold it uh, I could just simply measure it which is Let's have a look and see what the width is right now. It is 11 and a half. So I could just measure 11 and a half across, like so. But I'm going to cut a 12 just to make sure. And so I'm going to cut a 12 there. And then I could baste it and then start to quilt. No, I am just going to do straight line quilting using the walking foot as I said right so it's already folded so once I cut it I should have let me just make sure I should have a full length of it let me just ensure before I cut because one thing I hate doing is wasting fabric so I'm just gonna open this 
and double check. It should be long enough. Let's have a look. Yeah, it is literally just, literally just. So I think I will be all right. So I'm gonna fold it back again, making sure the edges meet. And I'm just gonna cut 12 across. And I'm also cutting the fabric in line in which the pattern, because the pattern is flowers. So I am just, folding it in line with, with the pattern so that the, all the flowers is running in the same direction. Right, so I'm going to line it up yet again. I'm just, I'm just clawing the fabric down so that it's lovely and it meets the end of where I just cut it. I'm going to line it up. It's just lovely and straight. What am I feeling? And then I can get cut. So it was 12. I'm going to measure 12 again. Over. There you go. Let me put that there. And I'm just going to use one of the grid lines and do a nice straight cut. Alright, so that's that. Put that away. Don't need that. So, all we're going to do now is open this up. So I have cut it slightly bigger, so I'm going to put wrong sides together. Just line that all up there. Excellent. That fits. Remember, I just said it was just. Look at that just got those edges there so perfect absolutely perfect that was good measuring sometimes the math works <laughs> and there's no swearing involved <laughs> okay <coughs> excuse me so that's that let me just move this to the side so you can see that properly so i'm going to pick up a camera and show you what that looks like this looks absolutely gorgeous i'm so in love with these fabrics Let's have a look. Okay, so all right guys, so that is what is what it looks like. So yep, yeah, same all the way through. So some double single for the blender, then a single blender, double blender, double, double blender to emphasizes the middle, as well as double blender, double blender single blender and then double all right so that's how i've laid it out looks really beautiful i'm loving it the blender fabrics just works so as you can see the back now uh, see what i've talked about those flowers at the back there so and again I've, I've chosen this so that if you wanted to turn it on the other side you can use this okay so all I'm going to do now is glue base this and I'm then going to start doing some quilting lines all the way down, literally, for all of it. And I'm going to use my guide just to ensure it's nice and straight. Okay, so I'm going to iron this just to make sure it's lovely and sweet because I like to do that. I like to iron once I have pieced it together on the batting. And just remember again to open up those seams it's a must for me when I'm doing quilt as you go on the batting and I'm joining the batting together just always make sure you open up those seams very important so that it lays really flat okay do not miss this step right so once that's done you're just gonna fold it back over and I'm just gonna iron it down first in fact you could you could you could do the the um, the glue onto it and then just simply iron it but I'm going to do both of them because I like it to be lovely and neat and I think it helps with the quilting also all right so I'm just going to do that and it's, the iron is not steam there's no water in it it is just a medium warm to medium iron it's just to smoothen out those fabrics okay so now I'm going to glue base
Okay, so the table runner is completed. Now I'm going to do the four table mats now. So again, using up my strips, I'm going to do this exact same thing. Put the strips on too, just so that I know how many strips I actually need. I've used my fabric blender here just to turn it down and also just to add a little bit more variety of color and texture visual appeal to the mats and the table runner so the fabric blender I think works really beautifully so what you need to do if you decide to do this project cut the, all the batting the same size length width etc and then that way you can sew it down so I'm going to add the backing on so I've just laid it out here so that I know how much strips I need for each of the um, table mats all right so I'm doing four all together it's a quilt as you go just as you would normally so I'm going to sew literally down onto the batting front sides together fold over and continue once I have um, sewn the whole thing together I'm going to go back onto the machine and do some more quilting lines onto there so no free motion just literally using the um, the foot and just go straight down all right um, so I think that's it for now so hopefully I'll show you the end result very quickly before I forget once you've laid it all out just bear in mind that you will lose a quarter inch seam at each seam line here and you may possibly want to add another one on to the end there but if you don't choose to do that that's fine it really depends on how much strips you have left over by then isn't it so it's a beautiful um, easy way to use up your strips of scraps and you can see some of them I've left really wide some of them a bit smaller it doesn't really matter really the appeal to it is that it's a, give a good clash of visual appeal all right so let's get started on that now okay guys so this is the table runner that's completed now it looks really lovely it's got a really good length just to sit right in the center of the table and that's it from a distance looks pretty good now I'm going to add the mats and then we'll see what they look like all right now so these are the mats on the table very beautiful it, I'm just really pleased with the outcome just goes to show you what you can actually make with scraps guys and just straight line quilting on all of them looks really really good but what I actually prefer is to use them as a wall hanging so I'm going to put them on the wall and I'll show you what it looks like all right guys so it's on the wall as wall art and I think it looks really beautiful like this I think it's really popping especially against the white background looks really lovely what do you think do you prefer to be used as wall hanging or as um, play settings for the table the accent color really shows up really lovely and I think it allows your eyes to rest from all of the busyness of the Aboriginal print. I did small lines quilting for the runner, whereas in the mats, the lines were a little bit larger. But overall, I think it's a really beautiful project. It allows you to use up all of your spare fabrics. And I think I got the inspiration for when I went to the actual Aboriginal fabric store, a lot of it was used as wall art rather than, you know, just for, for um, you know, clothing. So a lot of wall art was displayed and I thought it looked really beautiful in that sort of setting. Um, so I think that's where the inspiration comes from. But I'm really pleased with the outcome. I think this is where I'm actually going to leave it. Um, usually I try to sell everything, but I think um, this is where this one's going to live. I do love this i think it's absolutely beautiful and it looks really lovely on the wall there um so yeah let me know what you think do you prefer it as a setting or as wall art um the accent color is really popping really really popping didn't take long to make quick project can be done in over a weekend and again if you've got fabrics very similar to this why not try this project and see what you think about it Okay, even the binding, again, I've tried to keep all the colors very similar. Yeah, so I think the, the binding 
is batiks and I used that in one of my quilts that was some leftover fabric yet again it was scrap as well as the batting was scrap also so guys if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing if you're new to my channel like and subscribe hit that notification bell and I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about this wall art thank you so much guys happy quilting and I'll see you next time and crafty quilting designs.